Guardian reporter Jacob Steinberg has written a most poignant piece on the current situation, that's West Ham United, and how the David Moyes project uh, is no longer working. Steinberg, uh, Guardian reporter, is undeniably, it's a, it's a well-written analysis of the situation we find ourselves in. And it highlights a number of issues that most of us were maybe aware of, uh, but perhaps chose to ignore, uh, whilst the results were still relatively decent, both in the domestic and the European uh, competitions. There are three specific uh, issues that Steinberg has focused on. Uh, style of play, not changing, clashes with football, with, with some of the senior players, and the, and the transfer windows not being as successful as maybe we'd all hoped for. So let's focus on the first one, which is the style of play not changing. Uh, as I said before the World Cup uh, started, um, I had a concern that uh, if we were still down near the bottom of the league, I, I'd be massively concerned. And also when we returned, I'd also be concerned if the style of play had not changed as well. Well, the first concern is our position in the league has not changed after two games of returning from the World Cup. Not that I expected anything from the Arsenal game, but uh, I kind of think, and I think a lot of us were hoping, that we would see maybe a, a different style of play against Arsenal. A, a little bit of uh, get-go, a little bit of uh, giving them a, a, a good fight. And uh, we thought uh, when uh, at half-time we, we, we were 1-0 up, that maybe... It was the start of uh, a, a new dawn for West Ham United, but not to be. As we know, uh, the second half was a completely different game. And uh, with no points from the first two uh, games, it's it, it, we've now got a tough away game at Leeds uh, coming up on Wednesday night. And I fear that uh, we could end up being six um, league defeats in a row. Uh, depends on the results around us. We might end up being in the bottom three uh, by Thursday morning. The second concern about our tactics is uh, I genuinely believe that David Moyes would do something different. Uh, it may not never not revolutionary, but uh, maybe try a little bit something, a little bit of a change in his game plan uh, in order to get us on the on the front foot. And it kind of he kind of tried to do it uh, when we played uh, against Brentford. He changed the formation. He brought in a few different players. He played Paqueta in a deeper role, etc. But again, that the actual. You know the the, the uh, game plan itself um, sort of wasn't wasn't any different. Uh, he he tweaked a few things, but not enough to suggest that there was going to be a bit of a revolution happening at West Ham. As Steinberg suggested, we've become a bit of a soft touch. Uh, we're conceding very very easy goals, uh, and uh, it's it's interesting that uh, the last time we were classed as being quite soft, uh, uh, you know, conceding goals, etc is when um, Slavin Bilic was in charge and when Manuel Pellegrini were in charge. Uh, and their jobs, both their jobs went, didn't they? Because uh, we couldn't stop conceding goals. We couldn't win games. And it seems to be much the same with David Moyes at the moment. Twice Moyes came in and the first thing he did was to make us unbeatable. You know, he stopped leaking the goals. Uh, you know, if we weren't going to win, we were certainly not going to lose the game. But that element of our game is gone and we have become, as Steinberger suggested, we have become a bit of a soft touch. Next up is uh, clashes with senior players. This is an interesting um, uh, uh, part of the Steinberg's uh, uh, report. Uh, he suggested that uh, he's been clashed, he's clashed with players, especially after the... Um, the game against Crystal Palace, uh, where we lost 2-1 back in November. Look, I can't corroborate this, but um, I'm sure Steinberg is not making something like uh, something like this up. I'm sure he knows he's far closer to what's going on than, than I am, without a shadow of a doubt. But what players might um, uh, Moyes uh, clash with? Well, there are a few that I've got in mind. Uh, Soufal, for example, recently spoke out. Uh, and he, he looks like he's the sort of uh, person that will give as good as he gets. He really recently spoke out that uh, he's not been starting games and he hasn't been able to speak to the manager about it. And maybe you can see someone like Su Fao, you know, um, speaking out and uh, saying his piece. Another player, quite possibly, is Antonio. He's also come out and suggested that he's unhappy with the lack of starts this season uh, and how he wants to sort of fight for his place, etc., but um, his form has fallen off the cliff edge. Uh, and Steinberg even alluded to that as well. You know, for the last year or so, Antonio has not been anywhere near the sort of player that uh, we we once knew. And uh, that uh, is a concern as well. But you can see maybe Antonio being another player 
that maybe would speak out uh, amongst the senior players. And then we have, of course, uh, Saeed Benrahma, uh, who's been picked on consistently uh, over the last, uh, you know, the last couple of seasons. Now, interestingly, Benrahma has started and has completed the last, what, three games or so? But it was interesting in the game against Palace, which Steinberg alluded to, uh, that there was a bit of a fallout in the dressing room. Uh, in that game, Soufal was an unused sub. Antonio came on at half time for an ineffective Skamaka. And uh, Ben Rama, despite scoring a cracking goal in the first half, was substituted on what, 64 minutes or something like that? And it was quite interesting, wasn't it? We all saw the um, the images where Ben Rama was just standing there waiting, knowing what was going to happen, that he was most definitely going to be uh, subbed in that game. Now, it wouldn't surprise me. Ben Rama doesn't look like the sort of person that would lose his call, but it wouldn't surprise me if maybe even he had a few words with uh, David Moyes after that game, especially given that, uh, you know, we lost. You know, there were quite a number of things that went wrong in that game, weren't there? You know, the sort of the deflected uh, winning, winning goal, uh, a number of other issues that, um, uh, you know, sort of weren't, weren't really good for us. Dawson, the kamikaze pass to Kera, who couldn't control it for their first goal, etc. So there were a lot of things wrong. And you can understand that quite possibly tensions would have been uh, quite high. Um, but uh, those are the three players in my mind that perhaps spoke out uh, after that game. Maybe Soufal, maybe Antonio, and maybe Ben Rama, especially Ben Rama for having been subbed. When at that time, he probably was the best player that we had on the pitch at that moment in time. Next up is uh, the transfer window and whether it's been a success or a failure. Um, that's the third issue that Steinberg has uh, alluded to. Again, he's made reference to in his report. Um, I was recently made aware that there'd been some tension with Moyes and the board over some of the summer signings. That, and apparently Sullivan has not been too enamoured with some of the players that we brought in. Sullivan now is especially, uh, you know, perplexed by the fact that uh, Maxwell Cornet might need surgery and could possibly miss the rest of the season as well. Um we we heard uh, exclusively on sixfoot2.co.uk on Tuesday that uh, Cornet has been to France to see a specialist, and the specialist has uh, uh, found an ultra rare condition in the in the calf injury that he's only ever encountered twice in the twenty five years that he's been in practice. So you can understand there might be a little bit of tension there as well. Steinberg also alluded to the fact that David Moyes spent a hell of a long time in the transfer window chasing targets that just seemed like quite possibly they, they weren't going to we weren't going to manage to get. There was, of course, uh, Anana, uh, who's now gone to Everton, Lingard, who's now at uh, Nottingham Forest. And of course, Philip Kostic, who had his heart set on going to Juventus and was never really likely uh, to come to West Ham at all. And I remember talking about these three players doing uh, um, uh, scouting reports uh, and talking about their prospects and what they might bring to West Ham United. And we did spend a hell of, hell of a long time talking about, especially these three players uh, coming to West Ham and none of them materialised. So what happened then? You know, for Anana, you could read that we brought in uh, uh, Flynn Downs. Uh, for Lingard, you could read that maybe we brought in, what, Skamaka? I wonder if 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 we'd have bought Lingard, whether we would have actually bought Skamaka. And then, of course, uh, for uh, Philip Kostic, we, you could read that we brought in Corne. Look, I don't think that there's anything wrong with those three players that we brought in. I think Downs is, is definitely a future um, prospect. He's shown uh, good signs of being a, a very good footballer for, for West Ham uh, in the Premier League. I think Corne, if he wasn't injured, I think will bring an awful lot to West Ham United as well. And I think Skamaka, you know, if he's played in the right way and we use him to, to his strengths, could also be uh, a really good uh, prospect for West Ham as well. So it's not that, uh, you know, I understand that quite possibly uh, Onana, um, Lingard and Kostic were Moyes' first choices. But the players that we brought in are probably are not necessarily bad players. I just think um, we've been unlucky with Corne. I think we need to, uh, I think we need to play downs a bit more. We may well see him in the FA Cup against Brentford at the weekend. And I think um, with Skamaka, use him in the right way. And I think he'll be a valuable asset to us. Now, one can argue that uh, what, uh, um, uh, uh, what uh, Steinberg talked about is that we haven't strengthened in other areas, in particular areas like the right back slot and also the left back slot as well. One can argue that um, we can make the right back slot work. 
Um, uh, ben Johnson is not really at his best at the moment, but he's still a great prospect to have around. And, and maybe uh, he just needs another chance to demonstrate what he's capable of. Uh, I know Kara has been a bit, little bit hit and miss, but I still think that he's, he'll be valuable to us. But it is also young Harrison Ashby. Now, there's, also, there's talk about Ashby possibly going off to Newcastle in this transfer window. Uh, I know it's still early doors, but nothing has uh, materialised about that yet. But maybe Ashby could be given an opportunity as well to demonstrate what he's capable of doing. And again, the Brentford game, the FA Cup game, might be an opportunity for him to shine uh, and maybe claim that right back berth. But on the left back side, one could argue that we definitely have missed an opportunity here. We know, uh, we've known for a couple of years that we needed to replace or at least have competition for Aaron Creswell as a left back. We brought in Emerson, of course, but we all knew well before Emerson signed for West Ham United, that he was very much a left wing back rather than a, a traditional left back. So he wasn't really going to be direct competition for Aaron Creswell. Um, we've been linked to so many left backs over the summer transfer window, and we definitely did miss an opportunity to someone to bring someone in that could compete with um, Aaron Creswell. Was Emerson a panic buy? I don't know if he was necessarily a panic buy, but certainly when it comes to all the other targets that we were linked to, one could argue, like I said, you know, a good left wing back, but not necessarily a proper left back. Now, Steinberg didn't mention, uh, uh, Steinberg mentioned briefly Paqueta and, and about uh, the, the, the role that uh, he's been played against Brentford. And Moyes has said that he will be exploring to use Paqueta in that deeper role again. I think the jury's out on this. I know a lot of people are saying that Paqueta doesn't run and he's not, a, you know, uh, the Premier League doesn't suit him, etc. Let's see what happens now that he's actually played in his more or less rightful position in a more deeper role in midfield alongside Declan Rice. It's quite possible that that could work, but probably will work even better if we played it in a 4-3-3 formation. If we had Declan Rice, Paqueta and another for me, for nows, in that midfield role, I think would actually work really well. I think they complement each other. So the jury's out on that. Steinberg didn't mention Ariola, but I think we all know we, Ariola should probably be our number one now. Um, he's demonstrated already that he's a re very decent goalkeeper. Uh, Fabianski has given us fantastic uh, service, but uh, yeah, I think uh, that that's another change that uh, maybe could actually spark our season. Having a goalkeeper that uh, you know is good at athleticism, he's a good uh, uh, good good shot stopper, and his distribution is far far better than uh, Fabianski's is. Uh, Steinberg also mentioned uh, briefly um, a good. And, and about the injuries that we've had with him and, and uh, Zuma. We know that Zuma and Agurd are, are um, David Moyes' first choice uh, centre-backs. And he hasn't had them throughout the whole season. They're close. Agurd should be starting against Leeds United. And Zuma may be starting. We get mixed messages. But if he doesn't, then I'm sure he'll be back for the Wolves game. Um, but uh, Agurd, uh, and, you know, dis uh, I know, again, it's disappointing that you haven't had one of your key players that you've signed in the summer. Uh, available to you. But again, injuries, injuries can happen to any player. They can happen to a £5 million player or a £50 million player. It's just one of those unfortunate situations. So has the um, the transfer window been successful for us? I think the jury's out. I think, you know, when you look at the likes of Ariola, who could, should be better used, when you look at the likes of uh, Emerson, probably not the sort of player that we needed, but, you know, I guess he gives us pace. Cornet's been unfortunate. Paqueta, needs now, finally, after half, nearly half a season gone, is being used in the rightful position. And maybe also, if we if we didn't chase uh, the wrong players or, or the players that we knew weren't going to come to us, uh, maybe we could have got players in a lot quicker and got them settled in a lot quicker. Because it does, as Steinberg has suggested, it does look a little bit disorientated at the moment. Skamaka looks uh, off the pace with the rest of the team. Uh, other players just don't look like they kind of fit in at the moment. And maybe if we had a little bit more pre-season with all of them, uh, that might have bode, maybe have boded a bit, a bit better for West Ham United. Um, Steinberg is, def is definitely changing or, 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 or definitely pushing or very gently for a change in the dugout, if anything else. And he put a couple of names forward as to uh, who we might be um, interested in. First of all, he talked about uh, Unai Emery and apparently we targeted him before he went to Aston Villa back in October. That's interesting. I, I, I just wonder how much um, uh, there is in that. Uh, if we did approach Emery, 
why didn't we push for him completely? What 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 was what was going on there that maybe we didn't manage to get him over the line? And if that is the case, then why has West Ham United stayed with Moyes all the way through until now? If we were targeting Emery back in October, then uh, surely, as many people have suggested, that maybe the uh, the time to replace David Moyes would have been during the World Cup. Um, if we were looking at Emery in October, then surely we had five, six weeks during the World Cup to target another manager. So that was interesting that Steinberg suggested him. And then he went on to uh, suggest other other managers that might be Good options. Uh, Postagulu, uh, who currently manages Celtic, he's an interesting person. And Steinberg suggested maybe um, going for someone like him. He's certainly a most progressive manager who's a good eye for talent around the globe. Uh, The signings of uh, Postagulu at uh, uh, Celtic have been interesting. Georgios Giacomakis from the Netherlands, Jota from Portugal, jo- uh, Josip Juranovic from Poland, who we've all uh, think is a fantastic player. Uh, and uh, he's also looked at the, the Japanese market and uh, about to bring in Yuki Kobayashi into the Celtic uh, uh, team as well. Um, Postagulu isn't a young man. He's 57 years of age uh, and only a few years younger than David Moyes. But he seems to be a far more progressive manager in his in, in his approach. You know, um, there's no denying he's done exceptionally well at Celtic. But how many people often remind us that the Scottish League is nowhere near the level of the Premier League? In the Champions League this season, Postagulu hasn't done quite so well, losing four games and drawing, drawing two. Um, he hasn't won any games. Like I said, he certainly plays a progressive style of football. He believes in a 4-3-3 formation and is renowned back in his Australian homeland for playing a fast play style of football. Sounds great, but I think it could be a risk that could go badly wrong uh, for West Ham. He's never managed a big team in any of the big leagues before. And the, the Premier League is a, is a different beast, isn't it? And then, of course, he also mentions um, Luis Enrique which is a very interesting uh, proposition indeed. He recently resigned from the Spanish team, as we know, but he's uh, he's a manager and an ex-player that is laden with uh, trophies. Uh, you know, that he's won. He's one of the most coveted managers around, but could little old West Ham United attract him? Well, the Premier League might certainly be an attraction for uh, Enrique, but if I was a betting man, I'd say he'd be destined for work here in England in a team like Chelsea, probably at the end of the season. It will be interesting to see how long Graham Potter survives at Chelsea. They currently sit 10th in the league and are uh, a full 10 points behind fourth place Man United. So for them to try and get uh, Champions League football seems a little bit like a long shot at the moment. Ironically, I think it's someone like Potter who could be a future potential manager for West Ham. Uh, but going back to what Sullivan said, there's no manager available right now who we would want. So Potter is in employment at the moment, but might things change at the end of the season? Could it be that Potter um, leaves Chelsea if he doesn't succeed there? And could it be that he will be replaced by the likes of someone like Luis Enrique? And if Potter was made available, then quite possibly you could see West Ham United uh, maybe going in for a manager like him. He'd probably suit West Ham, I would say. Um, but that's in the future. That's to the end of the season. And that means holding on to David Moyes between now and the end of the season and hoping that we don't get relegated. There's a lot riding on the game against Leeds. If we lose, everything could, could, can change overnight. You know, it's quite possible that if we draw or we win, uh, there'll be a stay of execution. But as Steinberg pointed out, no change feels like the current situation is a slow march towards the exit door. <laughs> 